Another challenge of contact tracing is making sure they effectively educate the community. In this video, you will see how important it is to make sure contact tracers speak in language that is easy to understand. If fancy medical terms are used, it is likely that the case will not clearly understand what is being asked of them and how to best navigate their positive COVID-19 results. Hello. Hi, my name is Carson and I am a contact tracer working with Rainbow County Public Health. I have sensitive medical information for James Smith. Is he available to talk? The, this is James. What are you calling about? Hello, James. Because of the sensitive nature of the information and in order to protect your privacy, can you confirm your birth date for me so I know I have the correct person? Yeah, my birthday is January 1st, 2001. Is this about my COVID test? Thanks for verifying your birth date, James. Yes, it looks like your COVID-19 polymerase chain reaction test was positive for the virus. I'd like to talk about symptomology as well as some brief medical history and conduct a review of systems. Would that be all right with you? Um, okay. I don't know what that means, but I feel fine if that's what you're asking. Great. Well, let me go ahead and ask you a few yes or no questions to check a broad range of symptoms. Do you feel feverish? No, I, I checked my temperature today. It was 98.7. Was your temperature temporal or oral? Um, the gun on the forehead. I think that's the one. Okay. How about sore throat? No. Myalgias or arthralgias? I don't know what those are. You'd know if you had them. Must be a no. How about fatigue or malaise? Like tired? No, I, I don't really feel tired. Headache? chills or abdominal pain? None of those. Anosmia or agusia? Excuse me? Must be a no. You'd tell me if you had that. Lastly, any changes in your bowel pattern? Uh, I think I just said my stomach was fine. Okay, thanks. Now, since you're not having any symptoms, I need to develop your isolation calendar around your test date. When did you get a COVID test? I got swabbed two days ago. My friend who I was with told me he was tested for COVID because of his job two days before that, but he didn't get his results until then. He called me right after. Okay, so today is the 23rd. We'll define your infectious period as two days before your test and up to 10 days after. This is the period where you can act as a vector for the virus, resulting in the spread of infection to other people. I'll need to know who you were with over the last five days so we can call them and check on them. You're not going to tell everyone I have COVID, will you? Your health information is protected by HIPAA, and I cannot tell anyone about your diagnosis without your written permission. I will simply tell them they have potentially been exposed to someone who tested positive for COVID, check if they have symptoms, and inform them of their quarantine period. It is advised you let all contacts know about your positive test. Have you been in significant contact with anyone over the last five days? Uh, just my roommate. He lives here with me, and we don't really go anywhere. I knew I shouldn't have hung out with my friend a few days ago. Okay. I'll need to have a conversation with your roommate separately, letting him know he could have been exposed potentially, and that he will have to quarantine. I'll get his name and number from you at the end of this call, okay? As long as you don't tell him it was me, fine. Of course. So, for this next part of the interview, I'd like to talk about your medical diagnoses and any medications you may be taking. What have you been diagnosed with? Uh, I had asthma as a kid, but not anymore. Exercise-induced, allergen-induced, or both? Um, I'm not sure. I, I only used an inhaler a few times a year, then grew out of it. Okay. So no other medical diagnoses? No, I don't think so. What medications do you take? Tylenol when I have a headache, but really, that's it. Okay, thank you. Now I'd like to give you some instruction on isolation. Are you ready? I guess. Okay, so since you don't currently have any symptoms and you were tested on the 21st, your isolation period will start on that day. You will need to isolate for 10 24-hour periods from that date. If you are capable of isolating outside of the home and away from your roommate, that would be ideal. If not, please make sure to stay in your room with the door closed. Try to find a room with its own bathroom so that you are not sharing bathroom space with anyone else. If you can't do that, please wear a mask when leaving your room and wash your hands frequently 
and sanitize all surfaces when you are done. Do not leave your home for any reason except a medical emergency such as extreme shortness of breath, central or peripheral cyanosis, or angina. Do you have enough food in the home to last for the next 10 days? Oh, wow. Um, no, I don't think so. What about work? What do I tell them? If you provide me with your email address, I can have the county health commissioner provide you with a letter to give to your boss explaining that you will be required to isolate for the next 10 days before you can return to work. This will help you keep your job. As for food, is there someone that can deliver some food to you? I want to stress the importance of not going out. Uh, I, I guess my mom could bring me and my roommate some food. Does he need to isolate too? No. If he is not having any symptoms, he will need to quarantine for 14 days starting on the last day he was exposed to you. If he is exposed to you any time during his quarantine period, he will need to restart his 14-day quarantine. Well, I'm not having any symptoms, so can I really give it to anybody? I should be fine, right? Actually, no. Asymptomatic cases are still infectious and can spread the virus to other people around them. I can't stress enough the importance of not exposing anyone for the next 10 days. Now, if you develop any symptoms within the next 10 days, your infectious period will need to restart on that day. It's unlikely, but it can happen. When we call to check in on you, let us know you'll need a new letter from the health commissioner so you have an updated one for your work. Do you have any questions? Well. Uh, I guess not. Okay. I'll take your email address from you as well as your roommate's name and contact information. What went wrong here? The contact tracer used quite a lot of jargon. Even for those with an average amount of health literacy, that clearly either confused the case or resulted in some vague answers that the contact tracer just assumed. Let's see how the conversation goes when the contact tracer speaks in more simple terms. 